Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll be creating tic-tac-toe and C-sharp. So as we can see, we have the game grid printed with numbers from 1 to 9. If player 1 enters 1, then we can see a cross as placed at the position. If player 2 enters 5, then we can see a naught placed at their position. And if one of the players are victorious, then the game ends saying you win. Let's get started. Let's firstly start off by creating our grid. To represent our grid, we'll use a string array. So let's create a string array called grid, and then set it to a new string array of size nine, and then we can instantly instantiate it. And for us, we'll be using the numbers from one to nine as string values. Now let's focus on printing this array out as a grid to the console. Firstly, let's create a for loop which will run three times. So instead of the autocomplete here, we'll change it to i is less than three. And then within it, we'll create another for loop. So we'll go four, int j equals zero, and it will also run until three. And then within our nested for loop, let's print our value of j temporarily using console.write, making sure to not use console.write line. So we'll write console, dot right and in here we will write the value of j then at the bottom of our outermost for loop let's just add a console dot right line here to print a separate line in between each row then we can see as the console we've got 0 1 2 printed three times over for each row then let's go back over to our code and in between each of our numbers we'll want to add a little pipe symbol let's do plus pipe here then if we test it you can see between each number it has a little pipe representing the columns of the grid finally let's focus on printing out the rows so below our outermost console right line we'll add another console right line and we will print out a string of six hyphens and if we look at it we can see each number is separated by a colon line and a row line so great, now that we've finished working on the presentation of our grid, let's actually start by displaying the numbers from our grid array here. So within our console.write here, we will change a j and instead we would do it to grid of. So firstly, we'll need the row value. So that will be i times three. And then we'll need to plus on the j value, which is a column value. Then if we look at what we've done, we can see it now prints out numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 9 from our grid array. So great, now that we've finished displaying our game grid to the console, let's just finally wrap this up in a method called print grid. So we would do void, print grid, we'll take no parameters, then we can just add our curly brace on the end here, and we've got our function wrapped up. And here we can call print grid, and then we can see that our grid is printed out still. So next let's work on the actual game logic for tic-tac-toe. So we will want a while loop that will keep running until the game ends. So above our method, but below our method call, we do a while loop. And for now, we'll keep it running for the condition true until we implement our condition later. And we can move our print grid from the outside of the loop into the while loop. Within tic-tac-toe, we have two players. So to represent each player turn, we'll have a boolean called is player one turn which we'll initially set to true and then within our while loop we'll write if is player one turn we'll print out using a console.write line player one turn and otherwise meaning it's the second player's turn we'll use a console.write line and instead we will print player two turn so next we want to get an input from the player so we will use string choice and set that to console.readLine. So the player will enter a number from 1 to 9, representing which child they want to place a naught or cross on. We'll then want to check whether their choice is valid. So we'll type if grid dot contains choice and their choice is not the character we're using to represent crosses, which would be an uppercase X and their choice is also not the character we're using to represent noughts, which will be an uppercase O. 
then we can apply their autocross to the grid. So next we want to get the grid index that the player wishes to place an autocrosser. So let's create an integer called grid index and set it to convert dot to int 32 choice. And then as index starts from zero, we will subtract one. Then if it's player one turn, we will place at the grid index position an uppercase X. Otherwise, we'll place an uppercase O. Finally, at the end of our while loop, we we'll want to switch between player one and two. So we will set is player one turn to itself negated. So here, if is player turn is true, then this will negate the expression and changes player turn to false. And if player one turn is false, then it will convert is player one turn to the opposite, which is true, meaning we will alternate between player one and player two turns. Nice. So now we've got our game logic down. The final thing to do is check the victory conditions and whether either player has won the game. In tic-tac-toe, there are eight victory conditions. We can have a victory across the first row, across the second row, across the third row, along the first column, along the second column, along the third column. And finally, we can have a diagonal going upwards or a diagonal going downwards. So we want to check whether any of these victory conditions have been met. So below our while loop, we'll create a function called ball check victory, which will take no parameters. Firstly, let's check our first row. So we will have a boolean, name it row one, and set it to grid zero equals grid of one and grid of one equals grid of two. So here we're checking whether the contents of the first cell is equal to the second cell and whether the contents of the second cell is equal to the third cell, meaning we either have all noughts or crosses along the first row. We'll then want to do this conditions for the other two rows, so we can simply copy it, change this boolean to row two, and instead of zero we will have three four, four, and five. So this will check the middle row of the grid and check whether the entire row is filled with even noughts or crosses, meaning that either player one or player two has met a victory condition. Finally, we'll do this for the last row. So we'll rename this boolean to row three and we will check the sixth, seventh, seventh, and eighth cells for equality. Next, let's focus on checking the column victory conditions. So you can copy the boolean and instead of row, we will rename it to column one and we will check that for the grid zero. Then we'll check for the third cell, third cell and the sixth cell. Then we'll want to do this for the other columns so we can duplicate it rename this to column two, then we can change the grid indexes to one, four, four, and seven. Finally, let's check the last column. So column three, and we will change the indexes to two, five, five, and eight. And then finally, we want to check the diagonals. So we can copy this again, rename it to diagonal down. And for that, we will check the grid cells of zero, four, four, and eight. And then for the upwards diagonal, copy that. We can change this to up. And then we want to check our indexes, six, four, four and two. Finally, for victim, at least one of these boolean conditions must be met. So from this method, we can return a long boolean expression conjuncted by or expression. So we have row one, row two, row three, column one, column two, column three, and then we will have our diagonal down and then our finally our diagonal up.
Finally, let's come up back up to our game logic. Within the while loop, where we initially place true, we change this to while not check victory, meaning the game will keep looping until someone is victorious. And finally, we want to handle the case that no one wins and instead there's a tie. So to do this, at the top of our program, let's create an integer called num turns and set it to zero. Then after we place either a naught or cross on the grid, we will want to increment our nums turn by one. Then we'll also want to apply this to the while condition. So while no one is victorious and, and our number of turns has not reached nine, then our game will keep looping. And finally, at the end of our game, after a while loop, we want to print whether the game has been won or there was a tie. So here we can do if check victory. And if we are victorious, then we can print out you win. And otherwise, we can print out tie. So let's test our game. So let's focus on getting a victory for player one. So for now, let's do one. I mean, you can see the cross has been placed at position one. For player two, we'll place them on the fourth position. And we can see a naught has been placed there. Then for player one, let's do two again. Then for player two, we can do five. And finally, we'll place a naught at three. And it will say, you win. Now let's test the game and get a tie. So alternate between placing noughts and crosses on the grid in a manner that nobody wins. So and finally we'll place a naught at position six. And as we've reached a maximum number of turns, which is nine, it says it ends in a tie. And with that, we've now created our very tic-tac-toe game in C Shop. If you'd prefer to see a written version, then the link for the blog post will be in the description. As always, thank you very much for watching this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next.